Well, some people say, fake it till you make it. I say, what if you fake it and somebody take your life thinking that that $14.99 chain you got on is actually a $49, $50,000 chain when it's $14.99? I say, don't fake it at all. Matter of fact, this story has a lesson in it, and that's exactly what happened to homie. A man who posed on Instagram with two Rolex watches was killed after two women used the date rape drug GHB in an attempt to rob him. You know how it goes already. Brothers be thinking they finessing these females, and a lot of these females be finessing the hell out of these brothers. Check it. You want a threesome with me and my homegirl? Okay, we coming over to your crib. He getting prepared. You know, he about to beat the brakes off two for one. It's about to be going down in history. And then, <laughs> it all goes wrong. Saul Murray, 33 years old, had been set up in what we call a honey trap by Sirpreet Dillon, Semidayo Awe, these are the two females, Sapreet and Semidayo, who seduced him, stripped him naked, and then the rest ended badly. He was found in a pool of blood in the communal entrance of his apartment after their male companions, Ikram Afia, and Clayon Brown have been summoned because they gave him the drug. They gave him the GHB. What had happened was he's flossing on social media. These guys saw him and these guys pulled his card or should I say they got his ticket. So they said, I bet if we send two good looking females to flirt with him, and then talk about getting the threesome, I bet you he'll fall for it. Now, girls, here's what you have to do. You're going to go in there. You do what you got to do. I mean, if you got to give him a little bit of coochie, you do that too. But make sure you slip this GHB into his drink, okay? And he's got to pass out. Once he passes out, then you can get up and let us into the house, and we'll do the ransacking, searching. Because if he got two Rolexes like that, he probably got more money, more jewelry, whatever else in the house. Well, they slipped the GHB into his drink and he wouldn't go unconscious. It wouldn't work. So when it wouldn't work, one of the females said, oh, I got to use the bathroom real quick. I'll be right back. As they were both on top of him, kissing him, giving him good vibrations, if you know what I mean. She goes in the bathroom and she calls or texts the dudes who she's supposed to let into the house once he passed out. And she let them know, listen, we gave, we gave him all of it and, and it's not working. He's not passing out. Well, the police were later able to identify Afia. By a distinctive and rare designer Moncler coat that he was wearing. And it matched the one that was worn on a CCTV on the night of the offense. Homie had a camera inside his house. He had a camera outside his house as well. And there were other cameras in other places that they were able to trace back. Afia, who's 31 years old was found guilty of murder and was sentenced on Friday to life in prison with a minimum term of 25 years mandatory before eligible for parole. Now, Dylan, 36, Brown, 29, and Awe, 21, they were convicted of manslaughter. Dylan and Awe, they entered the flat about 11.30 p.m. on February 26th. CCTV played to the jury in court, showed the women, both women, leaving the apartment. 
19 seconds after they left the apartment, two men identified as Afia and the other guy were seen following right behind these females. One of them was carrying a large kitchen knife in his right hand. The Rolex watches that he had been flossing on social media that actually got him stuck up in the first place, those two Rolex watches turned out to be fake. A fake Rolex. Murray, the guy who was flashing the fake Rolex on social, Rolexes on social media, he's actually a father of six. He had no expensive items in his flat. And his apartment, he had just moved into his apartment. So basically, what we're looking at is a broke brother that was faking it to make it. Or faking it until he made it. Flashing two fake Rolexes on social media. You never know who's watching you. Just moved into an apartment. Father of six. Lost his life. Now six children will have to grow up with no daddy. All four of the defendants were convicted of conspiring to rob Murray between February 8th and February 28th. Ten days they planned for him. Afia was also found guilty of having the knife. Brown was jailed for 11 years. Dylan was sentenced to 10 years. And Awe was sentenced to 7 years. As the trial prosecutor Jane King's counsel said, Mr. Murray can be seen just a few seconds after the men. He's already been stabbed. He's hobbling. He is completely naked. He opens the communal door to his apartment and falls over in the doorway and dies. She said that night shift worker called emergency number, called the police after returning home an hour and a half later and saw him laying there in a pool of blood. Sad, bruh. So a postmortem found out that he died from a deep wound to his thigh. It penetrated his femoral artery and he bled out. So these guys weren't even trying to like kill him. They told themselves, I'm going to just torture him so he could tell us where the Rolexes are at. And so he could tell us where any money and other jewelries and apartments at. So they stabbed him in his thigh. But if you have any intelligence, you will know that your femoral artery runs through your thigh, right? Biggest vein in your body. And they severed that vein and he died. The murder took place in a very early hours, February, Sunday, February 27th, after Dylan made contact with Murray through Instagram and through WhatsApp. Both girls were on him. Both girls slid into his DM, both girls, hooked up with him on Instagram, hooked up with him on WhatsApp, and he decided he was going to have both of them at the same time. The four defendants traveled to Luton from London late on Saturday, February 26th, in a Mercedes-Benz A-Class car that Brown had hired. Murray met the two women outside of his apartment while the two men went off in the car and used a drive through McDonald's, all caught on camera. The prosecutor said the two women had shared brandy with Murray and they gave him GHB in his brandy to knock him out. They were drinking brandy. She added, she said, Miss Dillon and Miss Awe they both admit that they entered the flat with GHB and they both admitted to giving it to him and they both admitted in court that they have done this before. They have drugged other guys before who they saw on social media flashing jewelry and they hooked up with them and robbed them along with these two guys. 
set men up, steal items from them, including watches, money, and other valuables. And they said that they did it, usually, while the men were asleep. But for some reason, this guy, the drug would not work on him today. The men set up were also given GHB. It is their drug of choice. This is what they told the police. They said, this is our drug of choice. We use it all the time. We've done this before multiple times, and it worked. It just didn't work on him today. She said at some point, there was plainly some degree of sexual activity between two women and Murray. They were in there getting it on. When Murray got stabbed, when the other guys rolled into the apartment and started torturing him, and he got stabbed, he was butt booking naked. Had no clothes on whatsoever. Swabs from both sides of his face and neck contained the DNA from both of the women. So they were rubbing up all over him, right? The GHB dose that they had given him apparently was not strong enough. And so they contacted the two guys to let them know, come on through. Y'all gonna have to do something else. I don't know, torture him, something. Because he's not going unconscious. The police linked Dylan through the Instagram contact with the victims. Awe was picked up through her social media contact with Dylan. Afia was wearing the 1,350 pound coat at the scene. Detectives discovered only 69 of these coats were sold in the UK where this happened. Telematics in the car linked it to a KFC in London. When she gave evidence, Dylan admitted targeting six men in similar honey traps. Six men in a one-year space. One victim, she said, they got like almost $60,000 off of him. And she said, yes, the other girl was also involved in four of those six occasions. Now, in a victim personal statement, the victim's father, Colin Murray, described his son, Saul, as a wonderful son. And he said that he watched his son die on CCTV camera. He said, man, this is the last thing I think about before going to sleep. And this is the first thing I think about when I, woke, when I wake up every single day. Judge Michael Simmons said that Murray's life was cut short brutally. He said, there's nothing this court says or does can possibly repair the void that you guys have left in the hearts and the lives of Saul Murray family. Something went wrong with your primary plan. Exactly what went wrong is beyond the court's capacity to be sure off within the available evidence. The judge also said that Dylan had delivered a predatory lifestyle by targeting men on social media. Something that seemed like an easy money game had the potential to go wrong, and in this case, it did. After the sentence, Detective Inspector Dale Mepstead said, this was clearly a planned attack that was facilitated by these two females, Dylan and Awe. And then it was carried out by two males, Afia and Brown. It's obvious from the way the two women used a sedative substance on Murray and the fact that Afia was armed with a knife that they were prepared to get what they wanted at any cost, which sadly ended up being Murray's life. He added, that this was a very lengthy and complex investigation which involved scrutinizing hours of CCTV camera footage, hours of phone data, vehicle telematics, and other evidence to place each of them at Murray's apartment at the time of the offense. And I hope that the knowledge that all four people involved in this horrific incident will be locked up for a very long time to come. Hopefully, this can bring some level of justice 
to Saul's loved ones. This case is actually set to be featured in a documentary called 24 Hours in Police Custody later on this year. Listen. The moral of the story is don't go around flashing fancy jewelry on social media. You never know who's watching you. I don't wear jewelry personally, and I don't because I have been robbed before. And even though I got robbed a long time ago in Miami, Florida, I still think about it today. Like, if the person had robbed me and accidentally squeezed the trigger, because the guy that robbed me, he had a gun to my head. He had his finger in the trigger well. I turned around and looked right down the barrel of a revolver. If he had panicked and squeezed just a little bit, he would have blown my face off. So for that reason, I don't wear jewelry at all. And if you ever see me at an event with some type of jewelry on me, just know that that jewelry is fake and that jewelry is just for that event. Why put something on the outside of your body to make yourself a bait that could possibly lead to you losing your life? Think about it. Saul Murray, he was 33 years old. He leaves behind six children, all from flossing for the internet. My condolences goes out to him and his family. May his soul rest in peace. And may whoever watches this video learn this lesson. I'll catch y'all on the next video. It's Brain Flow TV, otherwise called Hot Topics TV. And you already know if the topic is hot, we're on it. It's Monday. We're off to a slow start, but we're getting it together. Stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button. I'm out. Peace.